good evening to all the participants for the know your ip weekly ip lecture series which has been started as an initiative of dpiit ipr chair usmania university this is the first week inaugural lecture of this weekly ip lecture series and the topic for today's lecture is intellectual property rights made simple the resource person for today's lecture needs no introduction and is a doyen in the domain of ipr professor g b reddy professor of law at university college of law usman university is the founding chair professor of the dpit ipr chair at usmania university sir is a lawyer turned academician and professor of law at university college of law usmania university he specialized in the area of intellectual property as an independent researcher publisher and teacher he authored 23 well received books on law including intellectual property rights and law copyright law in india he also published 74 articles on law in standard law journals and more than 30 newspaper articles he has offered five swayam courses including one on iprs and competition law sir has been a visiting faculty at several reputed institutions including the state judicial academy state excise academy ccrt naarm ts police academy national police academy nalsar university of law national industrial security academy dr mrs mcr hrdi ap hrdi academic staff colleges that is now hrdcs of several universities across india respected professor gb reddy garu i request you to please uh, to uh, stay on the session and uh, uh, enlighten the participants with your immense knowledge in the domain of iprs thank you sir good evening to all the participants the dpiit chair usmania university has embarked upon an exercise which is in the direction of achieving the objective of the ipr chairs established by the department of industry and commerce government of india that is creating more awareness among the stakeholders and others and sensitization of all about the various issues relating to intellectual property and another very purpose is to demystify the intellectual property rights i am saying this because many persons or even uh, faculty members are sometimes scholars they think that the intellectual property is meant only for you know certain qualified persons educated persons researchers scientists and engineers and the others feel that it is not their domain which is absolutely not true it is concerned with every human being everyone irrespective of the status irrespective of the field irrespective of the educational background because every human being can create intellectual property and every human being consumes intellectual property uses intellectual property at many stages of one's own life so in that sense there is an immense need to create awareness about the intellectual property in general intellectual property rights in particular and in order to understand the various aspects of intellectual property rights this webinar series or lecture series is organized this is the very first lecture and i have the privilege of uh sharing some of my views on simplifying the intellectual property rights and it will be followed by many eminent persons in the field of intellectual property including the creators of intellectual property including 
some of the best known rural innovators and inventors like uh, mr c malaysian who came out with inventing asu making machine which is immensely useful in uh, handloom industry there is another person from the grassroots level who got a patent for an instrument for climbing up and down the palm trees and others while tapping the toddy which can make the toddy tapping very simple you know very well that is also one of the very useful rural inventions so we are going to have the presence of the creators of intellectual property the professors who got patents in various fields the designers who registered their designs then the patent attorneys who patented number of inventions through patent agents and others and the trademark attorneys then the intellectual property rights authorities and officials academicians authors and many more in fact we are looking at a scintillating experience for all of you and us as well the title of course i said intellectual property rights in 21st century but uh, the presentation relates to intellectual property rights at all times well kindly look at uh, the the statement the very first statement on your screen which emphasizes the commercial importance of intellectual property and exploitation of intellectual property rights when bill gates became the richest man in the world it was said that for the first time a knowledge worker became the richest man replacing the oil workers sultan of brunei and many others and that became possible because of the commercial exploitation of intellectual property rights so i am referring to a statement made in a an article published in harvard law review sometime in september 1997 another important aspect is that intellectual property is more about the imagination knowledge will be acquired gradually so when albert einstein said that that denotes the fact that without imagination knowledge can never be acquired and all of us are having very rich imagination only thing is that we must convert the same into knowledge the third point is very important because when you look at the national uh, intellectual property policy of 2016 the the vision document categorically states that creativity and innovation should be stimulated by intellectual property for the benefit of all not only for the benefit of you know in fact uh, only the creators but also for the benefit of the public at large similarly the intellectual property promotes advancement in science and technology arts culture traditional knowledge and biodiversity resources the point i would like to clarify is that intellectual property is concerned with almost every field every discipline and it is interdisciplinary as well as multidisciplinary in nature then it should be the main driver of development and another important point knowledge owned cannot be monopolized cannot be kept in a sealed cover it must be transformed into knowledge shared that's what we are trying to do whatever little knowledge we have we must share with others so that it will be multiplied that's another very important facet which i wanted to bring to your kind notice well when we are talking about the 21st century you know that it is described as a century of knowledge revolution and when we are talking about the knowledge revolution we are referring to the contribution of knowledge workers whether it is please uh, you know see on your screen michael jackson appearing to be falling down but he never fell down because while performing the dance posture he used shoes 
with certain technology which prevented him from falling down even if he leaned forward by 45 degrees so was the case of all his troop members that was patented you can google and find out look at the beautiful jk rowling and she became the wealthiest author for a very long time because of her harry potter series books and other works and at one point of time her annual income surpassed the annual income of the british queen queen elizabeth 2 bill gates who is in the news for various reasons even in recent times but he became one of the wealthiest men in the world by exploiting the intellectual property rights maybe copyright in computer programs or patents in business methods operating system so on and so forth then you also look at a non human being which is not a knowledge worker but creation of the knowledge that is howard onco mouse howard onco mouse created by two scientists in uh, howard for uh, conducting oncology or cancer related experiments which was patented in usa in 1988 the patentees names are philip c leder and timothy stewart this is one important aspect well now i will come to the basic question those participants who are already exposed to this field may consider this as refreshing their memory intellectual property is that property quite distinct from the traditional property or corporeal property or physical property intellectual property as the name itself suggests is intangible property which can be you know in fact created only by the human brain which cannot be sensed touched perceived or physically possessed this is one important aspect and it is creation of human mind and when we labor mentally in fact uh, in telugu you may call it medho sampatti hakkulu medho sampatti medho means intellectual sampatti means property and it is created only by medha medas or the you know in fact the brain the intellect this is one and one unique thing about intellectual property is that it is in the form of rights the rights constitute intellectual property and these rights arise out of the intellectual creations in various fields it could be scientific field where many inventions are made it may be industrial field where you come across the industrial designs trademarks service marks geographical indications including appellation of origin or literary field where you come across you know all lot of works like literary works artistic works musical works so on and so forth and even artistic field when we think about mf hussein or picasso or someone else just look at the kind of paintings they had made and the intellectual property in the artistic works like paintings sculptures inscriptions so on and so forth but when we are talking about intellectual property rights they are in the form of patents copyright trademark design gi traditional knowledge plant breeders rights new plant varieties many more in some jurisdictions even trade secrets are considered as intellectual property rights then as i mentioned in the beginning intellectual property is not confined only to the technical creations or it is not synonymous with the patents though many of us in fact regard intellectual property as only patents which may be wrong it covers cultures cultural property it encompasses heritage and it protects the creations in the field of science technology engineering management what not almost in every aspect of human life intellectual property can make its presence and another important factor is that intellectual property is in the form of information what kind of information maybe some kind of technological information which may be in the form of invention which may be patented or it may be symbolic information in the form of marks including trademarks and service marks which can be registered as such 
it may be in the form of ornamental information which may be again protected by way of industrial designs it may be ornamental information or aesthetic information therefore when you are talking about the information you can't keep it confined to a safe deposit locker the information travels very fast especially in this digitized world therefore what is created in india today this minute it may be accessed by somebody in timbuktu somebody in suriname somebody in sudan within no time without affecting the original copy therefore it goes across the nations that is one of the unique characteristics of intellectual property then other than this intellectual property generally confers only limited monopoly rights because when we talk about the private property it may be kept in the private domain forever intellectual property also could be private property though it can be owned by the government agencies but it has limited monopoly rights that means whoever created it or whoever owns by registering the same they will have to enjoy those monopoly rights only for a limited period and subject to certain conditions as bill gates himself said intellectual property has the shelf life of a banana banana you know it can't be kept just like that forever within two or three days it will be rotten it will be destroyed similarly intellectual property rights once they are registered and acknowledged they will remain in the private domain only for a particular period of time depending on the nature and kind of the intellectual property right then another important facet intellectual property is not on the cloud it is in your hand in my hand when we look at any cell phone you come across at least five different kinds of intellectual property a brand name for example look at nokia look at apple samsung whatever it is that is protected under trademark the external appearance is registered as a design so samsung design is different from apple design which is different from you know mi design similarly the third one is any technology that is used in the intellectual the, the cell phone is protected under the patents and there are patent wars between samsung and apple i think more than 40 countries are witnessing the the, the long standing disputes relating to certain certain standard essential patents also i will explain that later then the sim card reflects something called a layout design or it is something like semiconductor and integrated circuit design then we have the operating systems or it may be you know android ios software all of them are protected under copyright if one cell phone can encompass five different kinds of intellectual property then just imagine right from our you know in fact toe to the head how many kinds of you know in fact things we use in our day to day life our watch our pen our you know in fact uh, apparel right our button everything has a connection with intellectual property then though we have seven well recognized forms of intellectual property rights you can see five on your screen patents trademarks designs trade secrets they are not recognized in every jurisdiction as i already said copyright then you can also cover geographical indications of goods then again the you know in fact uh, uh, plant varieties plant breeders rights sometimes traditional knowledge indigenous knowledge so on and so forth this is uh, an important uh, you know in fact a table which can demystify our understanding of intellectual property rights and its protection and their protection when we look at these you know seven different kinds of intellectual property patent for instance what exactly is patent patent comes from a latin word called patente means to open to disclose simply stated if anyone comes out with an invention in the form of a new product or process which satisfies a test called none test only to simplify this i am stating this none test denotes novelty utility and non obviousness 
the the invention must be novel means there should not be any prior knowledge prior working prior publication prior documentation whatever second it must be useful our utility must be there our industrial application must be there so when the invention is capable of being used and applied are produced in an industry that is the second one industrial application and utility go together the third one is non obviousness obvious means clear non obviousness is the opposite thereof you are talking about inventive step if when the invention exhibits something over and above the existing knowledge technologically or it is reflecting an improvement in economic value or both then you can call it inventive step subject to these three conditions patents are granted to the inventions which may be processes or products of course two kinds of patents can be granted and today in 2021 speaking on 18th you know december we can say that every invention is capable of being given process and product patent subject to the, the satisfaction of three conditions but once it is granted the patentee the owner of the patent who can be the inventor himself or someone else who acquires the invention can enjoy the monopoly for a period of 20 years from the date of its registration which is the date of the application so patents stay in the private domain for 20 years they come into public domain after 20 years trademarks for example we have number of trademarks just look at yourself your shoes they have a trademark your watch has a trademark right and if you are reading a newspaper there is a particular logo there any advertisement any brand any ticket point is very simple when goods and services are traded after industrial revolution the choice of the consumer has increased today similar goods and similar services are offered by different companies multinational and national or even domestic right so to distinguish the source of such service or goods the marks are applied different marks different logos different brands different surnames which are used as you know in fact uh, uh, distinctive uh, marks there are so many and it is for you whether to register the trademark or not to register but registration certainly offers better opportunities to grow you know commercially and also to prevent others from misusing your goodwill or you know your reputation in the market this is one and you must know that apple is the costliest trademark in the world today costliest brand in the world today with almost about 60% of the total value of the apple company being recognized only in one trademark that is apple and if it is registered it is protected for 10 years and it can be renewed forever coca cola 1888 was the year even today in 2021 we are talking about same coca cola right it's a proprietary name a trade name trademark designs also for example just look around our you know in fact uh, uh, sitting room hall you come across furniture you come across various you know in fact uh, goods with different designs jewelry right even a biscuit has a unique design you must have seen little hearts kind of thing so any articles any goods which have certain original shape configuration pattern etc is capable of being registered as a design the unique features applied to the articles or movable property or the goods right which can be separately manufactured can be the subject matter of design protection to be more precise industrial design protection they must be registered and if they are registered they are protected for 10 years but a flexibility is given to extend the registration by 5 more years so the maximum time during which an industrial design can be kept in the private domain is 15 years geographical indications of goods if you look into the you know geographical indications registry in india 
you come across 416 416 GIs registered in India. You know, in fact, uh, as on uh, uh, 26 11 2021, just about one month back. Question is, what are geographical indications? <clears throat> we come across three kinds of goods in our daily life natural goods, manufactured goods, and agricultural goods. All the goods may not be very unique in their appearance, quality, right? Or, you know, the potential purity and all. But some of them are unique. If that uniqueness is because of certain geographical factors, based on various geographical conditions, like the climate, the kind of soil, the, the rainfall, or sometimes it may be even the expertise of the people living in that particular area, then you can register them as geographical indications as a collective property of those people. Maybe the residents, maybe the producers, maybe the skilled persons as it is. Right from champagne, the, the you know, in fact, the sparkling wine in France to Odia Rasgulla or, you know, Bengali Rasgulla or Varangal Duris or Telia Rumal from Nalgonda, you come across any number of geographical indications of goods which must be registered and which will be in the private domain forever if we renew the registration every 10 years. So, for example, Pochampali Ikat, which was the first GI to be registered in erstwhile Andhra Pradesh, United Andhra Pradesh. Darjeeling tea was the very first GI to be registered in India. Right? Today you have 416, which include some international GIs also. Tuscany olive oil or, you know, French perfume. There are so many. This is one. Because of the quality which has to be maintained and sustained, once the GI tag is given because of registration, the, the export potential increases, the marketability increases, the, you know, therefore, all the stakeholders stand in a good position to share the benefits. This is one. And for your information, the first four come within the meaning of industrial property, the patents, trademarks, designs, and geographical indications of goods. Then we have copyright. Copyright is, I think, the oldest intellectual property which must have been, you know, in fact, uh, registered or recognized all over the world. Copyright denotes a mode of protecting the expression of an idea. Not the idea itself, but expression of an idea. The expression must be original. Idea need not be. Therefore, when the human beings come out with various kinds of works, create literary works, musical works, artistic works, photographs, dramatic works, cinematograph films, computer programs, they stand to register the copyright, to enjoy the copyright protection, whether it is registered or not, because registration is optional. And it is said that copyright in a work springs into existence, springs into existence the moment the work is created, the moment the work is created means fixation is important. If it is in our mind, it is not copyrighted. But once it comes into some tangible form, certainly it can be protected. And it has the longest term of protection as compared to other forms of intellectual property. It is lifetime of the author plus 60 years. So many of the great works are in public domain. Shakespeare is no more, Valmiki is no more, right? Huh? But you know, when we look at the modern authors, they will enjoy their, you know, in fact, uh, copyright in their works. Authors are creators here during their lifetime plus 60 years in India, lifetime plus 70 years in USA. And some of the international conventions say that minimum it should be lifetime plus 50 years or 50 years as the case may be. This is another kind of intellectual property, friends. Copyright is undergoing major transformation. We are living in the digital world today. We are talking about digital revolution. We are talking about digital copyright also. Copyright in internet. So, 
there are many challenges to the copyright protection in the internet world and uh, there are many progressive changes also which have been made all over the world to protect the copyright in the digital world right even our copyright law of 1957 which has been you know in fact amended drastically in the year 2012 is in that particular direction planned varieties protection very simple friends imagine your childhood whether you had access to the kind of food we have today the varieties of rice the varieties of fruits the varieties of vegetables or the flowering plants or whatever today we are coming across number of plant varieties new plant varieties for example somebody a, a farmer by name mr chintal venkat reddy he was awarded padma shri for his regular experiments in the field of agriculture as to inventing uh, you know in fact a new variety of rice which can help even the diabetic patients right or recycling of the you know in fact uh, the the gravel or the mud from time to time whatever today you have plant varieties protection in india it is under a special law we call it sui generis protection in america it is only the patent protection but plant varieties can be protected for 15 to 18 years depending on whether the variety is extant or not then integrated circuits this is also equally important the chips i have shown you the picture of uh, cell phone you come across the the you know in fact chip having an integrated circuit design which is intellectual property right it can be protected for 10 years and it must be registered so this throws light on seven main forms of intellectual property rights and out of which you find that only you know trademark registration is optional copyright registration is optional patents must be registered because it's compulsory industrial designs must be registered gis must be registered plant varieties must be registered and integrated circuits must be registered this is one important aspect now classification i have already explained in the industrial property category we have the patents trademarks industrial designs and geographical indications of goods in the literary property category we have copyright we also have the neighboring rights look into the cinema or television or the performers or performing arts in those areas we come across neighboring rights for example tv channels have broadcast reproduction right right for 25 years along with the copyright they also get broadcast reproduction right for a period of 25 years they can broadcast the cinema any number of times or serial or any you know audio visual program same is the case with performers rights everyone is a performer whoever gives a live performance whether an artist a teacher or someone else a dancer a singer whoever gives live performance the person is entitled to certain exclusive rights right they are called performers rights a snake charmer also has certain performers rights he can prevent others from shooting the you know in fact uh, the snake charming performance a juggler a musician a magician all of them have the same this is literary property today then you have emerging forms of intellectual property in the 21st century we are talking about new plant varieties we are talking about life forms protection life also can be protected i am not talking about the essential biological processes i am talking about something which is genetically modified genetically engineered whether it is a bacterium or a plant or an, an animal we have seen the harvard anko mouse then genetic resources and traditional knowledge they also have you know wonderful cap capacity as well as capability to be protected as intellectual property the others i have already mentioned then what is happening now because intellectual property rights have come nearer to us today therefore not only the individuals are concerned about iprs but also the you know groups it has become a collective right some people call it third generation human right the traditional forms we should no more think about only the patents trademarks copyright designs and all there are new forms of intellectual property 
new developments in the existing forms also stakeholders are gaining more awareness greater levels of awareness are you know resulted now then we can talk about not only intellectual property rights we have to talk about intellectual property in general how it has to be valued how it can be marketed how it can be documented managed audited right ipm is a very important aspect to the managers mba you know uh, stakeholders right so how to register how to transfer the technology how to assign or license all these aspects and in biotechnology area also there is an increased patenting activity then there are business methods there are computer programs financial innovations also are being given patents right this is another important point then trips agreement i think we should know something about the trips agreement all of you are quite aware the agreement on trade related aspects of intellectual property rights one of the you know about 30 trade agreements under the wto regime of 1994 and today we are talking about certain minimum standards followed in all parts of the world wherever whichever country becomes a member of the trips agreement right so if minimum 50 years protection should be given to a copyrighted work the minimum should be followed in all the member countries if 20 years term is to be given to patent same is followed in all the member countries if computer programs are to be protected as copyright then that is the same case in all the countries therefore certain harmonization has taken place and from 1995 till 2005 the process of harmonization took place between the developed countries developing countries and the least developed countries now probably you know there is some kind of parity in the conditions of protection of intellectual property and don't think that today we are talking about the uh, you know the, the patenting of like forms louis patcher for instance he was given a patent to uh, an improved yeast way back in 1873 this is the evolution dna sequences are patented maize cereal pulses fruits vegetables there was a famous case diamond versus chakravarti in 1980 decided by us supreme court after that in fact the activity of patenting in the biotechnology got accelerated today we are talking about gm plants gm seeds so on and so forth about the gis i mentioned you may recollect some of the best examples you can see swiss chocolates champagne rockford cheese tirupati laddu also has been registered as a gi right and and as i already said there are about 417 gis registered as of 1611 2021 and from telangana region these are the ones from andhra pradesh there are so many right telia rumal varangal dudis dokra right bio piracy also is taking place you you must think from the angle of bio piracy you are talking about ongol bull which is capable of resisting even mad cow disease but there is a controversy between india and brazil today right and they say that in fact we have access to everything about this ongol bull it is our bull not yours germplasm whatever it is i am i'm not really a technocrat in that area there were instances of you know tiger spiders being exported illegally from india right there is something like bio piracy there then indian butterflies from darjeeling area so they were also exported in fact a uh, 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 zec entomologist means you know the, the expert in the insects he was caught arrested even prosecuted sentenced but he was allowed to leave the country because of this illegal export of butterflies from darjeeling area again it is related to entomology basmati rice for example an american company called rice tech incorporated tried its level best to get it patented sometime in 90s and they did not succeed certain other varieties got patented we in fact in a way uh, succeeded in preventing this uh, you know registration of basmati patent but somehow that mathi has gone i keep on saying this because today you come across rice mathi tex mathi or american basmati etc neem today you have more than 40 patents all over the world relating to neem but 
majority of the patents could be resisted they were rejected because of the intervention of india on the ground that neem is something relating to our traditional knowledge turmeric this is another important issue and two indians working in mississippi medical center they wanted to register a patent acquire a patent for the you know in fact uh, healing characteristics of turmeric especially when there are cut wounds india successfully stopped that endeavor and you know th these are the various instances of the biopiracy attempts at biopiracy but we need not talk about it governments will take care organizations will take care only thing is we must have the requisite knowledge right another important point many of you the teachers the students we think that we have a right to copy from standard books a standard publications fine that is uh, you know for making notes and all nothing wrong in that but for example a xerox center fellow copies 15 pages from one standard book 25 pages from the other 30 pages from the other ultimately you know combines all of them into a course pack on the advice of one of the faculty members whether you know xeroxing or photocopying them and supplying them at a cost to the students amounts to infringement or not this is one question and the the chancellor of oxford university himself was one of the parties before delhi high court in this case 2016 and please look at this the the delhi high court speaking through justice rajiv n law ultimately held that this may amount to something called fair dealing for educational purposes for instructional purposes etc etc a debatable decision but nonetheless the copyrights purpose is not only to commercially exploit the work but also to disseminate information on that sense in that sense you can understand this this we can skip this is very interesting don't think that only human beings create the intellectual property here is a pig it is called a pig caso it was a rescued pig in uh, south africa and the lady who rescued it somehow you know found that the the pig is interested in painting therefore a canvas was given colors were given brush is given look at the way it is painting even you will come across many videos of this particular you know wonderful very lovely pig painting and its paintings are sold for you know 400 francs swiss francs purchased by the swiss airlines don't think that only we can take selfies monkey also can take a selfie this is a famous case called naruto versus later naruto is the name of that monkey which took the selfie and this is a very rare monkey chimpanzee rather in indonesia which observed very closely the way this nature life photographer david slater was taking photos so when he went out for some time they took their own selfies and those selfies were sold by david slater then the people for ethical treatment of animals they filed a case saying that the the copyright violation took place because copyright belongs to the monkey not to the photographer so ultimately in uh, 2018 or so the the uh, ninth circuit court of usa held that only human beings can exercise rights uh, including intellectual property rights so monkey doesn't have any such right this is one this is one of the best rural inventions uh, dear participants this is called lakshmi asu making machine which was invented by mr g c malleshwaram chintakini malleshwaram a telugu movie was also made with uh, mr priyadarshi in the lead role and this is used for weaving pochampalli sarees and it prevents or it uh, helps the weavers in reducing their pain because they need not move their hand up and down or front and back at thousands of times for weaving a saree or textile material machine will do it right and and this is one of the best rural inventions we are talking about in fact you know the the intellectual property not only of the human beings but we are also talking about the intellectual property of the artificial intelligence and in fact this is something which we need to understand it must be 2014 not now zero is not necessary but tesla which is a pioneer in the driverless cars right now it says that it will replace the gasoline with electric cars 
whatever intellectual property can be claimed not only by the human beings but nowadays even the the ai entities are claiming though the the, the you know in fact a clear judgment has not come in their favor so far but in future you can claim that chitti the robo has acquired so and so intellectual property sofia the robo which has citizenship of saudi arabia has acquired intellectual property or dabas which is supposed to be an ai entity has acquired intellectual property that that day is not that far we must understand that so this is about patentability of computer programs we need not discuss much about sports sports is one area where you come across lot of intellectual property right especially relating to the broadcast to the production rights then you know in fact the courts in india also have taken note of the fact that the intellectual property rights must be protected and their resolution if there is any dispute the resolution of such disputes must be taken up on a priority basis this is one judgment of 2009 right there are number of other cases i know that it may not be a law class alone therefore these are some of the cases we come across whirlpool case we come across in fact uh, you know new delhi times case we come across head notes in judgments case there are so many now universities also in fact today they have realized the importance of intellectual property rights because they they use and produce mm. different kinds of intellectual property and day in and day out in the form of making inventions coming out with certain innovations then coming out with publications what not you look at the academic patents of some of the leading universities in the world this is one and and every university every higher education institution is coming out with an ipr policy now usmania is going to have its policy very soon we have certain wonderful initiatives taken up by india like traditional knowledge digital library where all the medicinal formulations have been you know registered whichever are in the public domain and uh, today there are few lakhs of such formulations well documented in the traditional knowledge digital library look at the last point uh, uh, dear participants national knowledge commission headed by sam pitroda in its second report ultimately went on to say this educational efforts on intellectual property rights must go beyond the ip offices because many people do not know where the ip offices are they are under the central government right maybe chennai all the four metropolitan cities ahmedabad in nagpur uh, there is a patent information system right whatever but the efforts must go beyond the ip offices they must reach out to scientists and engineers they may work in national research institutions for example national chemical laboratory pune helped a semi skilled worker about 15 years back in getting one indian patent and one american patent for inventing a fuel saving oil filter right he was only 8th pass or 9th pass i had a good fortune of meeting him personally but this ncl pune helped him but it must go beyond these research institutions they must go beyond the universities industry the bar but even the researchers the students even you know the people in the smaller towns rural areas they also must become aware of the intellectual property rights it can be done by registering a patent but you know of course it may be a scientific process time consuming money consuming but the central government has come out with a wonderful initiative of reducing the patent filing fees recently it is less than 50% of what others pay if the universities and higher education institutions do that right this is one one can go for registration of in fact uh, trademarks one can go for assertion of farmers rights every agriculturist if he comes out with a new variety he can sell his uh, you know you know new varieties farmers also have number of rights under the act now the point is very simple intellectual property protection has to be strengthened and th this totally may not be relevant for us policy options are there i am coming to the last point remember this sir intellectual property is today everyone's property it no more 
remains exclusive domain of lawyers or scientists or engineers the eighth failed you know semi skilled worker in mahindra industry getting an american patent and indian patent for his invention of a fuel saving oil filter used in automobiles that should be a silver lining mr chintakindi malaysia coming out with lakshmi asu making machine in weaving pochampalli sarees thereby you know in fact reducing drastically the pain of the weavers including his mother that should be a silver lining right so every person has to realize the potential to register their intellectual property document it right commercially exploit it if necessary or at least you know you 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 can give it to the society as a gift by foregoing the intellectual property rights during covid also we have seen number of efforts to you know in fact to free the uh, intellectual property the vaccines from intellectual property rights some countries also said no intellectual property rights well we support it that may or may not be the right solution but at the same time intellectual property is not only for the individuals but also for the society at large they are related to every discipline right this is very very important and in future people have to fight with not swords and bombs but with knowledge intelligence and intellectual property and intellectual property always contributes to social and economic development today so the very purpose of this lecture the curtain raiser is to demystify the iprs what exactly are these iprs whether only tatas and birlas can own them why not a common man i gave you sufficient examples but before we protect them first we understand what exactly are intellectual property rights then we create them sometimes we may identify and document them we have to register them exploit them and ultimately we may protect them then in fact a time may come when an ordinary individual also may compete with a, a multinational corporation a conglomerate right because of the immense potential of the human intellect so this is a small presentation for you thank you very much for a very patient hearing uh, a very uh, good evening to all the participants uh, thank you sir for the excellent presentation uh, and uh, it was uh, uh, covering all the different aspects of intellectual property and intellectual property rights and it was Uh, very uh, simplistically designed and lucidly presented thank you so much sir yeah now i request uh, uh, mr a srinivas rao to propose a vote of thanks uh, to the expert mr a srinivas rao is also associated in organizing of this uh, weekly series and uh, has contributed extensively in uh, developing the videos for the youtube channel Uh, of the ipr chair uh, we request uh, all the participants to uh, kindly subscribe to our channel for regular updates and also give your comments on the videos that are uploaded there uh, mr a srinivas rao uh, please uh, i request you to propose vote of thanks thank you sir thank you for uh, delivering such a wonderful lecture on this auspicious day Uh, wherein we have started this uh, DBIIT program. So to uh, mention about sir, actually uh, sir has a tendency to you know educate and uh, give lot of inputs to uh, his students. It is not a new thing that DBIIT has enforced this thing. Prior to uh, DBIIT has instructed or given a notification to circulate this uh, uh, knowledge. Sir has been doing it since long time. so i would uh, heartfully thank uh, sir for this particular purpose that he was been for the part of ipr and he was been uh, giving this not sharing his knowledge to all his peers and uh, sir was instrumental in uh, inculcating the culture of ipr among all his peers and all his students and all the ip professionals uh, basically who are based out of hyderabad telangana area so apart from sir i would also like to thank dr irfan abbas i would like to thank everyone who has participated thank you sir thank you everyone thank you thank you all i thank uh, dr irfan abbas i thank mr 
A. Srinivasrao, an IPR attorney and an LLM in intellectual property rights from Usman University for their uh, never-ending cooperation uh, in making this DPIIR, uh, DPIIT mission uh, a success in the beginning and we hope to continue this endeavor for years to come. I request all of you to subscribe to this channel and uh, in fact contribute in your own way and we are very confident of creating platforms for each one of you in the form of blogs as well where you can contribute some original ideas. I thank my colleagues, both of them, Dr. Irfana and Mr. Srinivas Rao, Mr. Nagaraju and I thank all of you for uh, participating in such a good number and it, it gives us a lot of inspiration and encouragement. Thank you one and all. Thank you very much.